Bill Platypus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're celebrating, everybody. Why? What? Why are we celebrating? What's the party for? Because Masters of the Universe Classic subscriptions are going through for 2013. Yeah, yeah. Did you get a subscription? No. Did you? No. No. So really, we didn't contribute to this, but we're gonna party anyway. Yay! Hey, any excuse to drink some scotch is a party. And party what hats. If we could wear a party hat, you know, it's not a party unless it's party hats. Or two. So. As the case may be. But really, guys, that, I mean, talk about toy news for this week. Uh, really, the only toy news is what's going on with Maddie. In fact, I even asked around. I was like, hey, Transformers guys, is there anything going on? They're like, no, not really. Hey, G.A. Joe guys, what's going down? Nah, eh, nothing. By the way, for all you tuning in, this is It Figures Podcast, the toy and action figure podcast on the <laughs> it figures podcast.com a part of the pop culture network uh-huh like i thought are you sure like, i feel yeah. like there's something else there that goes there but yeah, that's it uh this is uh, episode 162 and this is i mean course, that might make a difference for somebody and this is me your uh beautiful host killing and my uh sidekick dirt not me anyway uh all night people were uh you know wondering you know was maddie gonna make it was maddie gonna make it would Masters of the Universe Classics for 2013 go through? Now, here, listen to this story, okay? Okay. About 4.30 Pacific time um, on Monday, mm -hmm. Toy Guru put a post on the Maddie Collector forums saying that they were about 91%. They needed to be at 100 for it to go through. And that was apparently about the time he was leaving the office. So we had no more updates from them, but they said that the store would remain open selling subs until... Uh, midnight Eastern Time. Of course, why wouldn't it? Then about 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 9.30, somewhere in there, Toy Guru was on He-Man.org, and he put a post on there saying that they were actually going to leave the store open all night so that people could keep buying subs so that hopefully they'd be able to make that 100%. So all night... People were going around, if you go to the Matty uh, forums, if you go to He-Man.org, they're saying, well, I went ahead, I bought a second sub. Oh. I bought a third sub. Oh, you know. Got another one to make it happen. Come on, guys, we've got to do this. Buy another sub. One guy said, well, you know, I bought two for me. I've got three friends overseas, and I'm going to buy for them so you know I can get cheaper shipping than you can get through Mattel. Uh, so I'm going to save some money there. And then I decided to buy a couple more. And then tonight I just said... I, you know, I gotta support the line. So this guy bought ten subs. What? Five of them are spoken for. The other five subs he's getting to support the line. He says he's just gonna sell money bay. So I'm I'm pretty sure this was a plot. So all night, all night people are talking about this. This morning, um, about uh, let's see, what was it? About eight thirty here, um, six thirty Pacific time. The uh, Maddie Collector website updated. And the little thermometer for DC Universe Classics uh, actually popped up and showed that they had gotten over 100%, but there was no thermometer for Mattel. So, you know, everybody's like freaking out. Well, did we make it? Did we make it? Did we make it? Did we make it? It took about four hours for Toy Guru to make a two-minute video that he put on YouTube, uh, basically celebrating and saying, Hey, guys, we did it. Masters of the Universe is going to make it to 2013. They got somewhere between 130 to 135 percent of sales of what they needed, so they got about 40 to 45 percent sales just overnight from uh, 4:30 Pacific time. Do you buy that? Do I buy that? Do you buy that like, they made that much percent overnight? Yes. Or they already knew they had enough and was just trying to get more people to. Sell. Well, okay. So here's here's the thing. At no point during the night did they update. On how many sales had actually been done. So as people are going through middle of the night, they wake up the next morning, six o'clock in the morning, they're like, oh my gosh, I still don't know if it's gone through. Can I still order one? Okay, what the hell? I'll, I'll order one. And people are posting, like, I got another one. I went ahead and got one. And then they find out that, yeah, they got 130%. And, and I'm sitting there going, I wonder if at 9 30 at night, when he posted they were going to leave the store open all night, if they hadn't already gotten that 100%. Mm -hmm. But they were getting so many sales, they just said, you know what, we'll, we'll just go ahead and leave it open overnight instead of closing it at midnight, and we'll just see how many more we can milk out of this. Because you know, 
if they had had some sort of meter or thermometer, like telethon, like big board, as soon as it hit 100, that was it. Like, they wouldn't sell anymore. Right. Because everyone would just be like, okay, well, that's 100, it's done. But, na but because it kept going, all these people are saying, oh, I got two, I got three. You know, I went ahead and got another one. I didn't really want it, but I went ahead and got it just to support it. So I'm wondering, looking forward to 2013, when all these subs are coming out, all these people are saying, you know, oh, I, I just, I got an extra one, I'm going to sell it on eBay, you know, whatever I paid for it, that's what I'm going to sell for. And I'm wondering if 2013 is going to be the year that every figure is just dumped onto eBay. Oh, I hope so. Like, you know. Because I've been debating on getting a sub, and I was like, you know what, I... Well, I do enjoy the figures, and I do love the line. I just, the money situation is getting out of control, and I just, I feel like I've been screwed so many times with sales and cheaper prices. I mean, look at it this way. Uh, early uh, 2012, you know, late 2011, there's figures, people were dumping them on eBay at lower than cost. So, I figured if so many people were getting desperate at the subs now, that's probably going to be another situation that occurs. Well, maybe. If so not, they said, I paid the same. So they've, they've had different numbers depending on where you go. It's somewhere between 130 and 135 um, percent. So I guess you just got to kind of take that with a grain of salt. Um, they did say that as far as the voting, um, everybody who got a sub was able to vote for the Fans' Choice character for 2013. Um, probably going to be October, November, somewhere around then. Uh, the character who won is Geldor. Who is basically like this Jitsu Zodak looking Fisto guy? I, I don't exactly know what this deal is, but he came in first. Second place is Illumina, and Illumina wasn't that. Didn't they? Wasn't she like way down on the list? When uh, she actually came in second place, uh, is like twenty seven votes separated Geldor and Illumina. I don't buy that at all. And the Illumina people are like freaking out. Yeah, I don't like, buy that. They at all. are just crazy upset. Uh, Trap Jaw came in third place, and he was also pretty close. The Trap Jaw variant was was very close to the other two. Uh, the, all the others were way down the line. I mean, they got some votes, but they were nowhere near the top three. How did no one vote for Songster? Green Demon, Songster, Evil Lynn, Khan, and Marlena. People that really want a repaint of Trap Jaw over Songster. Trap, yeah, a Trap Jaw is the one I would have voted for oh. if I was getting one. That's the only one. Because look at all those characters on the list. Trap Jaw is the only one that I'm kind of like, eh. Why would you want to repaint? Why wouldn't you do want something new? I wouldn't want Songster. Why not? Songster sucks. You'd rather have a, a repaint than yes. a new character? Yes. That's ridiculous. Especially with Songster. So anyway, Geldor is the one that's going to win. And if you go to uh, Maddie Collector now, all these people are like, well, my code for voting didn't work right. Or I tried to vote for Illumina and it kept looping. And my vote wasn't counted. This is fixed. This is rigged. And they're just like, sorry, it's closed. Yeah, I I buy that it was rigged. I really do. I really buy that. Which is like whatever. I'm fine. I mean, it doesn't matter because they're gonna make what um, they're gonna make. But I just I feel like that was uh, that was rigged. Now they're they did not get enough to secure um, like full to tooling for 2014. Um, you know, they said if it was, if it was gonna be high enough, then 2014 would have a bunch of special stuff. They didn't reach whatever that you know mark was. Um, but uh, they said 2014 will actually be a scaled-down year. Um, they're not going to have all the quarterly variants and a bunch of vehicles and stuff. It's going to be more about getting out those, the rest of those vintage figures to finish out the line. That's basically what they're going to be shooting for on Smart. that. Uh, which has also angered a lot of Princess of Power fans. We're not getting all of our Princess of Power figures! Yeah, well, it sucks to be you. It's a secondary line anyway. Rick. We're talking to you, Rick. <laughs> so, uh... <coughs> so anyway, uh, that was the big news. That's what got everybody excited. Um, they made it. Now, my, I'm also wondering, like all these people that, like they complain every year that they can barely afford their Maddie subscription. And now they're like, well, I went ahead and bought two. Went ahead and bought three. I'm wondering how many of these people after like two months are going to cancel their credit card and then just renege on the whole subscription. So then Mattel's going to be like, well, suddenly we only have like 80% subscriptions actually going through and billing correctly. All these others are not working. What happened? I wonder, I wonder how many people like legitimately did that. You know, just 
threw in some money knowing that I, I want to make the line go through, but I really don't want to pay for all this stuff. Maybe they bought one of those like Walmart. Yeah, reloadable like, cards. Yeah, green dot cards. Yeah. And they're, they're going to make this payment, but then they'll never do any of the others. It'll, it, I mean, it's going to happen to some people. You know there's at least somebody doing that. There's always yeah, the, there's the a BG there's doing a, that. There's a percentage of people who just drop out. So, so that would be interesting just to see what happens in 2013. I'd like to see like 75% of the people drop out. Like something ridiculous. <laughs> That's what you would like to see? Yeah. I don't wow. care anymore. I, I'm so like torn over the whole line. I just don't care. I'm over it. I want something new. Now, as far as the DC Universe um, Infinite Earths, that one, nobody thought that was going to make it. And they basically went from like 40% to 100 and, I don't know, 110% um, over the last day. Um, so that one, really, everybody kind of freaked out and bought subs for that. And there were actually people saying that they bought another um, Masters of the Universe Classic sub, and while they were there, they went ahead and got the DC Universe Classic sub to make sure that one would go through, too. So there's people with two or three Maddie subs, and then they got a DC uh, Infinite Earths. So again, I'm wondering how many of those are actually going to go through in the whole year. Um, but that one, they got the minimum uh, they needed to move forward in 2013, but not uh, to get fully tooled figures for 2014. So you're going to get, if it goes through in 2014, it's again going to be a lot of repaints and variants and not full new figures. Hmm. Huh. So that's been the big news. I mean, that's really been it. That's really been what everybody's been talking about. And like I said, I was asking other people, Transformers guys, anything new? No, not really. So there's nothing really else to kind of add or talk about. Unless there's anything you want to throw out there. You got anything to... Um... Hmm. Oh, I did want to, uh... <laughs> Yeah, let me... Hold on. Buy some time. Buy some time. I just, I just remember something. All right. Well, don't forget, folks, you can always uh, go to jointheforums.com, find the figures section, go to the fan corner, leave us questions, which we are about to answer now. We're going to go through some of those here in a minute. You can also leave us a voicemail by going to area code 217-953-4025. And, of course, we are a production of the Pop Culture Network. So you should go to popculturenetwork.com. Check out the comic book reviews. Check out all the different podcasts and video shows we do. Uh, we talk about movies. We talk about video games. Uh, all sorts of great, amazing stuff. You can check out the fan corner for the Video Game Loser Show. Post a question. If we pick yours, you often get a prize. We don't do that on the toy show. Okay. But we do that on the video game show. Well, okay. Because it's that much better. And it figures 161. Okay. We talked about who collects Alien and Predator figures. Okay. Any anymore. So, I got a, a Facebook, one of you guys hit me back, uh, Ice Frost, and they said that there's a large group of collectors out there that have the website, thehunterslair.com. And they do pretty much Predator and Alien stuff, you know, just like any other fan site, just like HeMan.org, but for Alien and Predators. So, thehunterslair.com, we obviously don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> there is a massive collection of people out there who, who still care about that stuff. Which I didn't know. So I'm kind of, you know, interested to know that there is a big fan side. Predator out. costume and prop forum. So. Well, yeah, but I mean, although if you're doing costumes, and, and, and it's not the same as toys, though. I mean, but, well, I'm sure it's all in the same. Predator know. toys, figures, and statues. Okay. All right. So, uh, but, you know, he, Ice Ross, I think he makes, like, uh, Predator, uh, like, Helmets, mask, you know. Yeah. Right? So, which are really amazing. I see them on Facebook all the time when they finish them, and they're like, "Wow, those are awesome." I'd like to have one just to have. I'm sure they cost a lot of money. Well, now you know the Hunterslair.com. But if they don't, I'll take one just to hang on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> and if you feel like making a real working shoulder cannon, let me know. I'd like to get a full size. Oh, that'd be nice. Like. To go with Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper. Yeah, so I can buy, so I can buy another mannequin for the store and like actually put together a full life size predator. Life size predator, yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm. Predator always makes me want ham. So the hunter's layer because the way he's got like the crisscross on him oh, to me on. it always reminds me of like a ham, like an, like his arm, his shoulders made of ham. It's a fat guy for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to the fan corner. Uh, first up, this is from Clone Yoshi. 
Hey guys, do you think the new Turtle line will last, unlike Bandai's Thundercats, or will it be more of a flop like Playmates, Terminator Salvation, and Star Trek lines? I see all positive feedback on the Turtle line so far, but seeing that a lot of the figures have arch feet and some of the figures have little articulation, can you see these becoming a problem down the road, or do you think they will fix these problems once the, sh once the show kicks up and profits on the new toys allow them to fix it? Well, I, I gotta say this about the new Turtles line. Um, Totally the opposite of what I thought was going to happen. It, for my own personal feeling, uh, when we saw them at Toy Fair, was I thought the smaller figures, the the four inch scale figures, whatever, were going to be like not good, and the classics were going to be amazing. And it turns out the opposite is true. It you know the smaller figures are actually super cool, and the classics are kind of dumb. <laughs> and when I say dumb, let me let me just tell you this. The, the very first pictures we saw, if you go back several months, were very shiny, very nicely designed toys. And then when you get the classics now, uh, while they are on a great card, they they look totally out of place. The, the articulation is kind of awkward. There's, you know, the the fingers. Um, and Rick was telling me about, you know, he had a problem with his Raphael with the fingers, like, coming off of the hand when he's trying to grip stuff with them. Um, and then with the weird, you know, foot uh, articulation, I mean, if you like super articulated figures, that's fine. But I, I think it takes away, because when you look at this, you think of the old, the original Turtles. And when you look at this figure, it kind of like robs your memory of what it was and turns it into this. And I, I, got, I can't explain it in a great way, but I just feel very disappointed by looking at this. When I look at these figures side by side, the classics and the new ones. All I can think of is I want this figure in this scale and I want this figure in this scale. Yeah. That's what I keep thinking every time I look at these. Is like this has so much more detail and there's so much more to him, he should be bigger. Whereas this one is much more of a simpler style. It's a much easier uh you know simple sculpt and i want this one to be in this smaller size where that detail isn't lost and, and actually looking at the classics i'm thinking you know what i think i would have been happier with a just a reproduction of the original yeah oh yeah if they had just done like they did with uh, he-man mm -hmm. and that 20th anniversary line like a commemorative was. release of, yeah. the, of the same exact scale articulation everything's perfectly a match basically a replica I think I would have been way happier. Now, I do got to say, the price point on these figures is very nice. Playmates did a good job keeping the price down on them. You know, they're not Mattel $30. <laughs> you know, uh, the classics range from, you know, $15 to $20 a piece, which is, is a great price for them. And then the smaller figures uh, range, what, 8 to 12 depending on where you buy yeah. them. So, it, it really, uh, good job keeping the price down Playmates. Now, how long are they going to last? I don't think the classics are going to, although they're selling really well right now, and a lot of people overseas, you're not getting a release of these for, you know, several months from now. So I think um, this line may not go very far, but I, I do think the, the smaller scale is going to keep going for a while, at least three more waves, I would, I would imagine. All right, and that actually kind of takes us to our next question. This is from Shady060805, who says, Hey, guys, new to the forums, which he is. This is his first post. So he actually came to jointheforums.com. He was paying attention. All right. I just wanted to know what the chances were for the TMNT Classics line to continue and if you had heard anything regarding it. You know, here's all I've heard regarding the line is that if you look at these Classics figures, there's a sticker right here that this says, inspired by the original TMNT animated series, and then in quotes, it says 1988. Now, over the course of this series that ran until like 96, 97, um, the show was on. Over the course of the series, there were subtle changes to the characters. The animation style changed a little bit from time to time. Uh, some of the other side characters that came in and out. So, from what I've heard, and whether or not this is actually what's happening and what's following through, the Classics line will continue changing the year that they're taking the inspiration from, whether or not you're going to get Splinter or Shredder or Krang or a different version of the Turtles. Um, of course, there was also the other uh, TMNT series that came out like 2002, 2003, uh, whatever in that time frame. So they may actually do some based off of that too. So that's what I've heard. That's the reason why that sticker's on there is because future waves would pick from different eras of the animated series. 
I guess that makes sense. And now, let me just say, I don't, while I'm not hating, like, I don't hate this line. I, I really do like them. I just, I kept this a set. We got them for the store at shoppcn.com to sell. Um, we, the classics we sold out completely. We got, like, just Three. a handful left here, and we went through cases. Um, the smaller ones were not selling as fast, but I wanted a set. I, that's the only time I've kept a set of something new like that. It hit the store just because I was like, wow, these are pretty cool. And, and I have to say also, looking at the this animated line, the um, outside of the turtles, I'm really kind of underwhelmed by the other characters. Um, I like the foot soldiers. I think they look pretty cool, and I wouldn't mind having an army of those guys. But I Shredder, think, I, I think... I think Shredder was pretty decent. I, I don't like that Shredder at all. I he do. just looks too basic and too blocky. Um, Krang, he looks okay. Krang looks but, weird. Yeah. Uh, Splinter is horrific. And uh, April O'Neil, I mean, she looks like yeah. she's 12. I'm, yeah. I'm not digging that at I all. do like the Shredder. I, I like the Turtles were great. The Turtles were perfect, by the way. And the Foot Soldiers, you know, you want more. They need to do army packs. And, uh, I don't know, personally, I like the Shredder. I kept the Shredder. See, I don't like the Shredder. I like that. But I want, like, ten of the Foot Soldiers. Yeah, that'd be nice. So... All right, next up from Gundam Warrior. Um, he says, it's been a while since I've commented, so I'm going to rant a little bit about Masters of the Universe Classics. Why not? We'll kind of, you know, skim through this a little bit. Don't, don't ruin our party, bro. It's quite long. Um, let's see. I have to take issue with comments made about the line losing articulation accessories and the like. While I understand 100% and agree about scaling back the amount of figures, I disagree with cutting articulation accessories and such. Masters of the Universe Classics, as stated by a forum member last week, is a reinvention of the Masters mythos with all the characters getting updated. If I wanted to collect Vintage Masters or 2000X Masters, I would do so. Um, so he basically doesn't want to see figures with less articulation, less accessories. He wants to, you know, keep them consistent, which, I mean, that's fine. As for the drastic, he says, drastic price increase of $25. I have to disagree with this, uh, that this is too much. Look. Toy Guru said it would be a drastic price increase. That's his word. Every time people freak out and they go, well, it's not that drastic, he's the one who said it. If you got an issue with it, take it up with him. Don't take it up with us for reusing his word. And second of all, it is a big price increase when you look at the cost of shipping has gone up, the cost of tax on most of these has gone up, and the cost of the figure. So while you're looking at your figure going from 20 to 25, um, your shipping has gone from like seven twenty something to like eight and a half, and then plus you're looking at your extra eight to ten percent on tax depending on where you live. So I mean, it is grown beyond the fact of just that one price. And, and honestly, most of us with jobs, it's not a big deal. But like people like Rick, you know, people who are like living paycheck to paycheck or or just have lower income, that it does put a hurt on them. But I don't feel like Masters of the Universe Classics is just a casual pickup line. It's, you know, I don't think if you are buying these figures already, you're already kind of in, an, in a certain, like, price bracket, I would say. They've kind of got you locked in. Yeah. And so, so they raise the price, and it's like, well, you know, you're already buying them. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, not to me, poor people are buying these. Okay? <laughs> let, me, let me not just go class warfare or whatever, but I'm just saying... <laughs> That this is already like uh, you're more established people who are, you know, obviously doing a little better in life are probably collecting these versus the people, you know, who expect to find them at Walmart for, you know, five bucks or whatever. And, and one other point that he throws in here is that he says, um, with Thundercats and Ghostbusters essentially dead, there's only certain lines he's collecting. Masters of the Universe Classics is one of them. He doesn't really care about turtles. So a few extra bucks on his figure he doesn't think is the big deal. Well, that's good for you. Uh, but that's not good for everybody. I mean, you may say, well, for me, this is the best thing. But, I mean, what if 98% uh, of the people out there disagree with you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that only goes so far. Yeah, it's like a 50-50 split, you know. Yeah. All right, next up. Ghost Wolf 765 says, which did you enjoy more, The Dark Knight Rises or The Avengers? You're going to say Avengers. Well, I didn't see Dark Knight yet. So. I mean, you know, I don't know why I haven't seen it. It's like it's totally ridiculous I haven't seen it by now, but... I just kind of... See, I, I uh, like Dark Knight Rises more just because, to me, it felt epic. It felt bigger. It felt grand. It felt like such a well-crafted film. Um, I, I think I'm going to like Dark Knight better just because I like the darker storyline and the way that the whole the trilogy's gone so far is really dark and gritty. And I like that versus the 
super like Hollywood style of Avengers. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean I in any way dislike Avengers. You know, I can say I like Dark Knight Rises more. That doesn't mean I dislike Avengers. All these people get into the, you know, which one is better? Which one do you like more? And it, and liking one doesn't mean that you hate the other. You know, if one of them's a 9.5, the other one's a 9.4. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, a lot of it, they may both be 9.5s. But which one would you pick out of the two that you prefer? I prefer Dark Knight Rises. I'd rather sit and watch that trilogy all the time. But you know? for Marvel's next movie to pick up, Space Punisher. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Actually, they are going to do Guardians of the Galaxy. So, if they're doing guys in outer space, then maybe there will be a space Punisher. I would totally be down for that. And why not? They couldn't do any worse than the last Punisher movie they put out. That thing was just ridiculous. It was so ridiculous, it was good. <laughs> Alright, next up from Nick, the toy columnist. Was he ever going to do that? Yeah, thing? I got... Yeah, I actually, he's got uh, a part two. I just uh -huh, got uh -huh. to put it together. Did, weren't we talking about this last week? A week ago that you needed to... Yeah, I got kind of sidetracked. Uh -huh. But I got it situated. Don't uh -huh. worry. All right. Don't you worry. Um, hey guys, I was wondering if you've ever damaged a brand new figure while removing it from the package. Yes. Uh, also, have you ever oh, ruined a brand new time, figure yeah. before remove? Have you ever ruined a brand new figure before removing it from the package? I don't, how do you ruin it before you? I mean, I get you like, fall okay, on it. Well, no, like, like this. Here's an example. Uh, I sent some figures, the masters, the uh, off to get graded, and um, what was that big He-Man? I can't think of his name. Was the he-Man figure out it's just like a big He-Man. King Grayskull? No. No, no, no. Oh, Titus? Titus. I always get trouble thinking of the name. Anyways, I sent him off to get graded. He comes back like a 9.5, which is like a you know ridiculously high grade. But his head fell off. And shipping somehow. So I got a graded a Titus figure with no head. It's fell in, fallen into the packaging somewhere. And so... You know, obviously that happened on the way back because there's no way they would have graded that at 9.5 with no head on it. So, yeah, maybe that's what he means. You, you, it's, it hasn't been opened, and it's completely sealed, but it's ruined. I mean, I guess you can drop it in the parking lot and before you actually open it and break it. Um, as far as, you know, removing them, I remember when I was little, you would get the toy in the package, and there were just like a couple twist ties you'd take mm -hmm. off, and then it would come out, and you could play with it. But then I remember at some point they switched to those clear rubber bands. And I remember grabbing, like, I don't know if it was a G.I. Joe or what it was. It was some three and three quarter inch figure. And I, I rip off the bubble and I grab the figure by the legs. And I go to, and I look, you know, I mean, there's no twist ties. So I grab them by the legs and I pull and I just get, like, a midsection and some legs. Yeah, well, you got your He-Man string. And you the, the torso on. and the arms are still in there because there's a clear rubber band going around this shoulder, through the back, and then coming around this shoulder. You totally can't see it until I'd already, you know, yanked it out and broke the thing in half. And then I'm you, like, you know oh. what's funny about you doing that? You still, to this day, I, yeah. have superhuman strength when you do anything. You close a door, you slam the crap out of it, you set something down, you knock things over all the time. It's like, I don't think you realize your own strength. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. I don't know. What and, am I going to tell you? And when I say, you're wrong. I do and, that on purpose just and, to annoy you. And when I say you don't know your own strength, I'm not saying you're strong. I'm just saying you do you overdo stuff. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. So I have no clue. I have no clue what you're talking about. What? I just put, I barely pushed it. But he, he's always like, man, do you always have to slam the door? It's like I didn't slam the door. I just shut it. You, you like. I just, I just break it off shut. the hinge. I don't know what you're talking about. It, like, yes, okay, so an entire rack of PlayStation games fell down. down. It's like, geez, but it doesn't mean it's that hard. Are you mad? Are you I always am. mad? Oh, you don't want to see me when I'm mad. You wouldn't like me angry. Platypus. <laughs> All right. Nasty Will says, hey guys, I'd love to see a movie line from the first Conan movie. And with the idea of a He-Man movie coming out, I can see some of the Masters of the Universe classics lines showing up again with the movie figures. I had no problem getting of the 2000X line of He-Man. They did not sell like the Snake Men here. Those are the only ones I missed. Not a question there. Um, yeah, I was trying there's, to find there's a question. No, there's no... Um, but, um... Okay, what do you think about... Uh, there a was new... a Conan... Well, I liked the, the last Conan movie that just happened was pretty good. I liked it. So you know, I, I didn't see it. I thought it was pretty decent. Most people are really like, no, it wasn't like the original. It's not Arnold. Well, fine. <laughs> It's a different time. Well, it's not going to be Arnold. Time. That's fine. It's but a different time. Okay? I don't know. I, I, there was just something about it that seemed off to me, and I don't know what it was. It was kind of, it was different, but I liked it. It was still enjoyable. Um, 
Oh, I did read somewhere that uh, that Dolph Lundgren wants to play He-Man again. Yeah, he wants to do a new, another He-Man movie. So. He's a little old, though. I mean, of course he wants. He wants money. He wants a job. He wants to be famous for something again. Of course. On on the, the Conan movie that just came out, did they do the whole thing of like him as a baby and growing up and whatever? Or was it just like some bad stuff happens and, hey, here's this long-haired guy? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure... It was just him, like, I can't even remember, but it was just him already grown up. It was just, like, some random yeah. story in his life. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the problem with it. I wanted, like, an origin and, you know, whatever. All right. <clears throat> Next up from Cavalier Chris. Hey, all, this one's for all who's there. That's me and you. Well, you know, that's us. Uh, and if certain folks aren't there, best guesses are acceptable. I'm wondering what toy lines are all the ones you wish never existed, thought of, or conceived of. That if the toy stories and collect or toy stores and collector markets burned down to hell itself, you wouldn't give a rat's fanny was lost. Uh, Hot Wheels, <laughs> and Monster Barbie. High, and Barbie, and Barbie. If we can just get rid of Monster High and Barbie, that would actually do a whole lot for toy stores. And and Hot Wheels. Uh, Hot Wheels are okay. They do like Batmobiles and A eh. Team vans. That's Corey. You can just do Corey. They do better ones, anyways. And you know, the whole diecast car thing and like. Except for Micro Machines, which I'll put in its own little... I'll put that little caveat. I'll put that in its own little category of be, as being awesome. Uh, I just don't appreciate Hot Wheels. I don't. Micro Machines, love them. Love Micro Machines. Wish I had more of them. Hot Wheels, not so much. They're cheap. That's the only saving factor of Hot Wheels. I don't know. I'm like, in my mind, I'm mentally like going down the toy aisles trying to think of like... Which ones need to go? You can get rid of Power Rangers. I don't really care to about make them. Space. Oh, no, some of those are cool, though. I don't really don't care about them. <laughs> um, I think that's okay. I mean, really, I, my okay. Like, I don't mind My Little Pony. I mean, I don't know. There's something about it. Like, people like it, whatever. Like, that one, I don't know. That one doesn't bother me. And Barbie's kind of one of those where it's just like, it's for old women and gay men, so whatever. You know, and if a little girl here or there gets a Barbie, then fine. You know, knock yourself out. But there's something about Monster High that just kind of annoys the crap out of me, where it's like, let's make slutty little girls to sell to littler girls. Okay, so I was at Walmart the other day, and we were taking my daughters because we are buying some birthday present for somebody, and they they have the Monster High, and now they have, like, a knockoff Monster High line that looks just like them, but they're not, like, monsters are, like, good, good girls, you know? Like, they're more angelic and, like, clean and less, you know... Slutty style. I can't think of what they're called, but they're. I'm just looking it's, real it's quick. It's just another line another line. line, but I thought it was kind of interesting when I was down in the toilet the other day. Also, if I had to pick apart Lego, we can get rid of Duplo right away. Gone. <laughs> never existed. Happy. Technics. Gone. Never existed. Super happy by that. And I, you know that'd be good. I just don't appreciate those. Maze girls. No, it was like. Wild Girls or like Bratz clones in Monster High boxes. Yeah, something like that. That might be it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, all of those, I, I don't know. Like, we, uh, Barbies, and it's like wedding dress Barbie. And it's like office professional Barbie. And, you know, um, we can't. HVAC technician repair Barbie. It's like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? But the Monster High ones, it's just like slutty schoolgirl skirts. You know, Dracula. It's Britney <laughs> Spears hit me one more time outfits. I just I, there's something about it's just I don't know, just creepy and wrong. Now see, now you're gonna get like, Holly, man. It's not it's not appropriate for children and it's not appropriate for adult males. <laughs> and that's he's talking to you, Swing. He doesn't like you. You want to rumble, huh? You want to throw down? I don't want your hands on me. Uh, what else? What else? All right. What else? What else? What else? Um, what else? What else? But no, I, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, that bugs me, unlike some of the other ones. I mean, I don't like Lilith's Pet Shop, but it doesn't offend me. I don't care. You know? I mean, if it burned down and went away and never came back, nah, I don't really care. But Monster High, like, if someone was like, you know, you press this button and Monster High is gone for all it's pressed. Like, before you're even done with the sentence. I kind of want to get rid of Squinkies. And, and this is the reason why. What? This is the reason why. They're all over my house, everywhere. My daughter has a million of them, and they're, I step on them all the time, and they're always like... And, and it's not so bad stepping on squeakies, because they're soft. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not like stepping on a Lego. But, but those bubbles... <laughs> well, nothing's like stepping on a Lego. <laughs> but those little bubbles, I don't know how many I've broken just stepping on them and, and crumbling them. Yeah. And But she has... She has easily 300 Squinkies. And well, you know what? They're everywhere. When we first started buying Squinkies, we never thought of the idea of saving the bubble. Like, you cut it open, you got the squeaky out, and we threw the bubbles away. Mm -hmm. 
You know, why would you save the bubble? And I still don't understand why you do now. Like, supposedly you're supposed to put them in there and roll them against each other or something? Well, like, no, no. Well, and they have the gumball machine. Yeah, we have the whatever. gumball. But thing. I mean, it's just like... I, that know. was kind of the... When, when Squinkies first came out, the, the whole idea to me was they were like a gumball machine toy for your, you know, for in, in your house. You don't have to buy my machine. You got your own machine. And then they had the gumball bank. So I, that's what I thought the concept was. And then, like, somehow it took off and it became like... Like but, a blind bag thing. You know, I tell you though, when I go into Toys R Us and they have like that display set up mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, the 500 squinkies all on different layers. You can see the Marvel ones and the Cars ones and, you know, the whatever, Toy Story and stuff. Like, I just want that display. Yeah. Like, how much for the display piece? I want to put that in my house. Like, I don't care about having the loose ones, individual ones, whatever. I want that display piece because that is so cool. So, if anybody's a distributor or something, you can get your hands on that and let me know. All right, next up. This is from the Burger General. Hello, General. Sir. Uh, which of you have decided in favor of getting a subscription for Masters of the Universe Classics in 2013? Neither. Next question. I was about to give in until I reviewed the list and saw the $75 Fighting Foe Men. Was this a concern in making your decision? How much easier would it have been to overlook it if it were a single figure no one cares about instead of a three-pack? Well, I mean, obviously a three-pack no one cares about is a lot worse than a single-pack no one cares about. But, I mean, overall, yes. The idea that it's not one figure a month, it's a figure, maybe a bonus figure, and then a vehicle or beast or three-pack or, you know, whatever. I mean, yes, that makes a big difference to someone like me. If it was one figure every month and that was it, no out-of-subscription, no secondary lines, no, you know, variants, vehicles, monsters, whatever, then I probably would have been doing it. Yeah. But once they got into that, oh, well, you get one a month, plus there's an extra one that doesn't come with your sub that you have to buy separately, you know, quarterly variants, all that kind of stuff. Nope. Yeah, the variants could have been like a, a day of sale special thing or an add-on. If it was just single figures, I would have just done that. And if they could have figured a way to like, like even if they would have held them for three months and shipped me all three together to save me money, I would have been okay with that. I don't need them right away. But like something like a three-pack, that should be three months worth. Yeah. You know, there's no June, there's no August, you ship the three-pack in July. Thanks. Or just a special, you know, collector's edition. You can buy it on the site. You know, I don't need you to put that in my sub. I don't want it. Right. So, yeah, that was a, a was a big big deal. All right, Omega Supreme says, Kill it! Yo. I've been getting some of the Lego minifig blind bags. See, that's his name, Omega Supreme. He's a minifig blind bags. Unfortunately, I've gotten several duplicates. Yeah. Are there Lego minifig trading websites? Do you have any duplicates that you'd want to trade? No. Because here's what I did. I, well, I you got, sell them all, don't you? Well, I okay, for the first couple of series, I just bought a case for the store, opened every pack, and we sell them by the figure, and I just kept the set. And, and like, I think series seven or six, I, like, missed the, no, six, I missed the order. And I didn't oh, yeah, the didn't case. they only have, like, a two-hour window to yeah, order them? Yeah, so I went on to eBay, and I just bought a set off somebody on eBay. And I figured, you know, they were, like, 60 bucks a set. I figured, you know, how many's in a set? Like, 16 figures times, what, they want three or four bucks now? That was a pretty good deal. And then I got the whole set completely. So that's what I do now. As far as trading goes, uh, no, I don't know if there's, there's some Lego sites out there. There's like a BrickLink, and you can sell your stuff there, and a lot of people use that. It's like a huge eBay store just for Legos, uh, eBay site for Legos, and it's just buy now pricing. And I actually, if you're missing pieces, go to BrickLink, because you're going to be able to buy every little thing that you're missing from any set. Best place to buy stuff. 50 million users, whatever, it's huge. Um, otherwise, just sell them on eBay. People actually just want the sets. Uh, group them together. People are more willing to buy multiples of a uh, group than individual. Uh, I don't have extras. I, I didn't keep extras. I just got one of everyone, and I don't buy them separately at retail unless they're, like, on super clearance. And then, because sometimes, you know, I, I, you go to some of these places like Walmart, whatever, and at, not necessarily Walmart, but other places, they'll, they'll clearance them down to nothing. And I'm like, yeah, I'll pick up a couple extra packs. But, no. Nope. No extras. You don't need any. Got them all. And Series 8 is on order, so I'll have all those when they come out. So. And the, the sorry, other thing you sorry can do, bro. The other thing you can do is that when the people from the store aren't paying attention, you can kind of rip it open a little bit and see what's in there. And if it's not one you want, you put it back and you grab a different one. 
They should just put a little window in it. I mean, I get the whole blind pack concept. Or they should have kept the, the numbering on the back so that you could... If you wanted the excitement of... Maybe, blind bag, you could buy it, but yeah, if you wanted but the if track you were down, the yeah. guy collecting... Like, the trash, uh, trash pack, I do buy those. Those are like the only blind bag thing that I'll just go ahead and buy blind. I'll just be like, yeah, whatever, $1.99, throw them in there. But when it comes to anything else... Doesn't matter what it is, my kids are like, oh, I want an Angry Bird. I want the green one. You know, they don't want whatever. They want the whatever. So it's just kind of like, okay, well, shh, nope, shh, nope, shh, nope, shh. There it is. We're buying that one. And they do make what's called bump coat. Like, if you go to, to if you have a smartphone, go to the Droid store, the Google store, and there are Lego apps you can get. And they will give you what's called a bump code, which is like the bumps in the packages, to to give you an idea of what the figure is <laughs> based really? on the bumps. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I don't I I can't figure out how to use it like correctly, but there's like people have it all mapped out, and you can see what you know an idea of what the figure would kind of look like in the package or where the bumps would be in the package to determine what kind of figure it is. And I guess it kind of works if you got the patience. Previously on the first two series, they actually you know, it had number tags where you can figure out exactly which figure was in every package. But since then, you have to use what's called a bump code to figure it out. It's doable. I just, I, was, I didn't have the patience for it. Yeah, and it's, it just gets frustrating after a while, especially if you just want one thing and you're sitting there thumbing it for a half hour trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I, every time I go, I, I try to figure them out. I'm like, uh, I got a kind of a good idea what it is, but not in 100%. Yeah, so I just rip them open. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Just screw it. All right, final question. This is from Mega Big John 28 He says, hello, everyone, at the PCN. My question is this. Of all the Simpsons and South Park figures that have been released, what would be the top five from each line you would really want and take time to track down? I, well, I, none of them really that I want, but I will say if we're going Simpsons, top five figures that we need... Um, you need a Cletus, the yokel, right? Yep, I take a Cletus. Um, I want a radioactive man. Yeah, I like radioactive. I can do that. Man. I can do that. Um, uh, you need a uh, a, a Barney, mm. Barney, drunk Barney. That's three. I kind of like a poo. Hmm, I can see that. Oh wait, actually, if we got a poo, I'd want a poo in like the eight baby, um, like baby harness thing. So he's got all eight babies on him. That's the Apu I'd want. I don't know if they ever made that or not. And then it was that Brock Brock Samson with the the Arnold, the Schwarzenegger yeah. guy, whatever. Maybe maybe him. Yeah. Why not? Up and at them. And okay, so what about South Park? Well, you need a Butters, and you need his uh, Captain Union. Chaos. Yep, or, Captain yeah, Captain Chaos. Uh, I don't know. You need a token. I want. I want <laughs> yeah, you need a token. You definitely need. A token. I, I want Stan's gay dog. <laughs> you need, and you need and a I hanky. Want, you need Mr. Hanky. No, actually, I want the Scientology monster. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the big Scientology monster. I'd go for that. And then maybe a dead chef crapping his pants. Oh oh, and the um, the, uh, the the iPod episode where they put them together like uh, that one movie. They sew them past the mouth. The three. Oh, a human centipede? Centipede. Yeah, mm. I need a human centipede. Mm. God, why can't I not remember that <laughs> horrific movie? Of all the movies that you'd remember, I think it would be I, I have centipede. it. I got a review sample of when it came out. Best what? movie ever. Really? Totally, totally good to watch. Hmm. Totally good to watch. Yeah. You well, should watch that. Yeah, sure. It doesn't It doesn't okay. make you want to throw up at all. Oh, really? Hmm. Keep that in mind. I'll, I'll, just have to, I'll just have to remember that for some point in the future when I've got... Plenty of free time. Oh, but time we are all out of right now. Oh, segment. Oh, we got through all the fan corner, guys. Don't forget, come to shoppcn.com, buy some toys, comic books, video games, music, and movies, because we carry all of that stuff. You can also get, what, a, a Pentium 2 motherboard Maybe. and processor, because we've got a whole we got a bunch shelf of, of those. Yeah, we got a bunch of random stuff that is, <laughs> is working its way out of our system. And, you know, those, th those peanut butter jars are not going to seal themselves if they don't get that Pentium 2 motherboard. <laughs> to the warehouse um and don't forget again go to popculturenetwork.com check out the other uh podcasts and shows and columns and all the neat stuff that we have on there there's 
toys and comic books and video I do, games. I do want to tell you guys, though, if you do go to shoppcm.com, there is, on the, on the left-hand side, towards the very bottom, uh, just below the menu, sub-menus, there is a, an option that says, become an affiliate. And basically what you can do is, if you sign up for the affiliate program, if you have a website or you, know, you want to post links on Facebook or message boards to come shop at our, our web store, you can actually earn money which is paid to you via check or PayPal, depending on how you want to get paid. If anybody comes from your direct links to our site and buys something, we will give you, uh, I think it's 12 and a half, 11 and a half percent, something like that, uh, of whatever they spend back to your account. So if you want to make some extra money, and with the holiday seasons coming up, if you guys have websites or, you know, if you guys like to be socially blasting, you know, uh, links out everywhere, <laughs> then, you know, there's a chance to do it. Uh, there are no banners available you have to create your own but the links are all usable uh with your own affiliate id and it's real simple stuff if you guys at all use website stuff you'll be able to figure it out easy um but yes yeah, a good good thought if you want to make some extra money and help us out because you know when you get that store moving you need to keep it moving these party hats are so cheap the back of the bag just actually says that this is six sombreros sombreros Alright guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.